Hello, Star Wars Galaxy Fear players, this is Andy Teshorto. Today, I'm going to be talking about this uh, post that was posted at the end of December before the beginning of the year. So far, we uh, it is the 14th, almost been half of the first month of January. We've yet to see what's going to happen with C-3PO, uh, Finn, you know, Phase 3 of the Sith Raid. And so, yeah, I want to talk about it. I want to talk, you know, maybe throw my thoughts out there. Does some of you agree with me, disagree? You know, please spread and share this out. Um, cause I have an idea for 3PO. So, but first off, yes, they're not really going to talk about nerfing 3PO. Um, they may change, they may or may not change the Finn, but it's mostly Treya. Um, because you can auto phase three. There's just an, almost an infinite loop with turn meter gain, which you can out turn meter, uh, Treya. And for any reason, RNG makes it to where, you know, she pops back up. You can take out the lightsabers, do it again, and you'll be done with her. But well, from the most part, from what I've seen, it's always been a, a straight auto. Once she's down, she stays down kind of thing. But going on with that, though, it's C-3PO's kit. And I really think that it's just mainly because of cyborg relations. All allies have 10% potency, plus 10% potency. That's cool. Whenever a rebel or Ewok ally uses a basic ability, they inflict expose um, on the target enemy for two turns, which cannot be evaded. However, weirdly enough, I want to say... I have seen some battles where it goes through tenacity, and that's kind of weird. I don't know. I feel like tenacity is not really tenacity anymore. Like, I get Raid Han's, you know, the beginning pop, stun someone through tenacity. I kind of get that. But if someone has tenacity, I, I, like I said, I think I've seen it, or I've seen it at least a few times. It might have been a little error. I don't know if they're going to fix that or not. But <clears throat> anyways, for each stack of translation... Rebel allies have 10% potency, doubled for Ewoks. So that's cool. So they're going to get a lot of potency, but not through the tenacity up. That makes no sense. But anyways, so this is the one that makes it to where you run Finn, C-3PO. Uh, I think it was BB-8? I don't remember that fifth slot, but I know it was Chewie and Han. And they would be able to deal so much. Oh, it was, I think Resistance Trooper. Anyways, you deal so much damage just going in, and they'd be using their basics, popping up uh, Foresight, or I mean, not Foresight, uh, uh, Expose, and that's insane. That's insane. I will admit, at the end, of, near the after I talk about the thoughts, I know I'm going to go over some teams that I think would be still viable to use with C3PO, but I don't know. Uh, but I'll get to them in a sec. But for the most part, I feel like this needs to be changed. And uh, just to make it a little more fair, because this 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 character makes it to where, like, if any Sith error, I haven't really faced with Trey. I don't have Trey, but I have a usual nightmare team. Sometimes I sub out Vader for Short Trooper for some durability and some health gain versus uh, Night Sisters. And yeah, it's I don't know, <laughs> it's tricky. Um, all I know is when you ever face a team with CLS, Chan, uh, 3PO, and R2, you just drop. No matter what the gear rate, like, the, in my uh, shard, I was facing C-3PO, or not C-3PO, um, yeah, C-3PO was gear 9, so was Chewie, but then all the other guys were gear 12, they're all maxed out, and it's like, really, I was trying to take these two down with the lower gear ratings, and I'm still being destroyed, destroyed. I took like two turns and I'm dead. And I'm like, that's ridiculous of how many times that expose happens. So I'm going to propose a couple of thoughts. One for just keeping the kit as is, just change it to like 50, 60, you know, 40 to 60%, somewhere around there. I feel like 50% chance to expose for the rebels at least. Ewoks, I'm fine with because I never run into Ewoks. But then again, Ewoks could get, you know, I'm surprised Ewoks hasn't even started coming up their ranks. But then again, they may have their reasons. Like, I think, I think um, 3PO is a high priority target AI for uh, defensive Revan teams. So Revan will target him and then just mash him, dis destroy, destroy him. And then this thing is gone. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, this thing isn't gone even after. It only it doesn't say anything about three PO being active. Wow, that's insane. Like I know I know translation goes, they lose translation, but they still have this exposed mechanic. Whoa, 
Yeah, I'm surprised that's still that way. A lot of teams lose their... Like, I know R2 gives his buffs, but then there's the fact that if he's active, anytime a light side character uh, crits, you know, he they cleanse themselves. But when R2's um, no longer in battle, yeah, he, you can't do that anymore. But still, that's insane. So that's my first initial thought. I know that kind of nerfs it a little bit, and maybe it would also nerf Ewoks if they did the full 50%. Ewoks also gain like a hundred percent chance. I get that. Um, also, it can't be evaded. Maybe get rid of that. I don't know. I don't know. However, the second option I have, I feel like this would be a better opportunity to change it around. Because um, honestly, I do not like facing against the team. <laughs> I, I I'm still working on Treyas. So I can't use her. I am just like stuck trying to fight any sort of team. Um. But the other option is take the rebel side of this. Whenever a rebel or Ewok, keep the Ewok there, that's fine, whatever. Rebel goes down to the resistance. So whenever a rebel, resistance, or Ewok ally uses a special ability, or they get rid of the Ewok on this one. Anyways, they inflict offense down on the target enemy for two turns, which can't be evaded. For each stag, resistance allies and re resistance and rebels allies have 10% crit damage. That's fine because rebels are, tend to usually have in the past hit really hard. Like Wedge and Biggs together. That's like usually a, you know, big crit crit chance, crit damage, mod upset uh, teams where they just dish out a ton of dash, damage. So I'm fine with, you know, rebels coming down to here. The one I would replace rebels with is none other than droids. Cyborg relations. Hmm. Huh. Uh, I know there's not really much synergy, you know, you'd see C-3PO with uh, droids, but at the same time, you kind of do. Um, talking with the Falcon, well, especially nowadays that the Falcon also has a droid brain in it. To talk with the Falcon, you had to have that protocol droid to understand language, you know, get a better conversation going with it or whatever. <clears throat> so, yeah, I say throw droids. You know, give droids the extra 10% bonus... Uh, potency for each stack of translation uh, give them the exposed because that would help droids in the long run that would help droids get a chance to fight out there uh, maybe have some HK teams get some synergy going and maybe in the arena maybe not like the top like 100 or not top 50 but you'd probably see them in the top uh, from 100 to 200 to maybe 300 somewhere around there Using like IHK-47, IG-88, 3PO, R2, and T3, M4. Something of that nature. Or sub one of them out for Jow Engineer. Or even, you know, BB-8. The only reason why I don't like BB-8 is just because he taunts on, on a full droid team. Uh, yeah, I hate that. But, you know, that that is one option. Or that's one option I really would love to see. Change it to where Rebels and Resistance are together. Because they're essentially the same faction. Same logos, same design. It's they're just too common. I so yeah. Um, but you know that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, I know in the past I did a video on different teams that C3PO is viable though. I'm still gonna do you know four different teams. 3PO is viable with some interchangeable characters. So you know here we go. But again, that's just my thoughts on you know a light rework for 3PO to make him make rebels not as annoying in the um, arena like they would still get this crit damage stacking and with raid han and chewy all that crit damage going off it could still be annoying to face but not as annoying as it is now with all this exposed i feel like exposed they're starting to over encumber <laughs> i know fallout fallout and skyrim term uh, over encumber us with exposed mechanic like, Resistance has it with JTR and Zeta Finn. Uh, I know Re uh, 3PO now has it. Uh, uh, Jen Erso has it in her leadership, which is surprisingly one of the leaderships I would actually run 3PO with. Yes, I know you get the counter chance, and that's great. But there are still some, you know, some uses for Jen Erso to get that. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel like that would be a cool team to throw 3PO on. Of course, again, I don't know what they're again. I don't know what they're going to do with this. It's probably just going to change the raid. Um, they're not going to do too much with Finn. I think I mentioned that in a recent post. But for the most part, I just wanted to mention, you know, my thoughts on a slight rework for 3PO. Kind of, it would nerf the rebels a little bit, but at the same time, 
it would boost droids, give droids a chance. So, but yes, going back onto it though, teams that would work. I have four teams here, but then there's some characters interchangeable. So, Jen Erso, obviously, duh. 3PO, yeah, Chirrut and Bays. These are the two because you don't see much of these guys anymore. And they used to be the meta for the longest time with the Triple Cleanse team, with Rex Led, General Kenobi, these two, and Nihilus. You know, they had it going, you know. They don't, you don't see it anymore. Of course, then again, they both do deserve their Zeta. They deserve their Zetas. Because they've been in the game for a while. They deserve just a light, you know, add some Zetas, add some stats here and there. And they'd be great. You know, if Chirrut is active, maybe Baze, um, some of his abilities can't be evaded. You know, maybe his AoE can't be evaded. So he can actually dispel AoE style. Or both his special abilities can't be evaded, but his basic can. But still, the, uh, the reason why I'm thinking of these two, or this team, is first off, Cassian also sets up buffs to the team. So that's that's huge. Spreads buffs like crazy. He also spreads debuffs crazy with his abilities. Um, so he'll be able to spread some exposes everywhere. Jin's leadership is if anyone crits, they have a 50% chance. Yeah, there, there's that 50% chance I was talking about, though. 50% um, chance to, uh, uh, what is it, um, expose. So you just get a little more exposed. So you might be able to expose twice, maybe. Um, but yeah, I can see this team working. I can see this team working. I don't know how well. Of course, my opinion, yes, you got Cassian that could do this, uh, spreading. But cheer it, cheer it and Bays, even though... They are, you know, you know, he's an attacker. He hits pretty hard. I've noticed a lot of the staff characters tend to hit really hard. Ham, uh, Ray, Ray Scavenger, uh, Genosian Spy. Yeah. But these two counter and Cassian. One I would replace Cassian with would be K2SO, another droid. You'd be able to sit there and counter as well. So you'd have three counter team uh, characters. So this is an interesting team to see. Um, next is the same team except the tank is General Kenobi and then you run G uh, Raid Han and Chewie. That's kind of usual. Um, this is also if you have these guys but you don't have CLS for any reason. She, you know, she's a good sub in. Yeah, I, I will say CLS is better just because the whole team can counter and can go crazy with that all countering. But, you know, at least you have these going. Um, next is Phoenix. I'm surprised someone has yet to do this, but then again, I know the test counts, yes, are back, but they're not at 100% or at the, what they were before. So the game changers are all in the process of rebuilding. So it may be a while before we get to actually see this, but I can see like these three coming in, um, or these three, these four being the, the main characters. So Hera, Zeb, uh, Kanan, Kanan for the counters. So there's another counter, uh, counter chance effect. Like three PO won't counter. We lose that. Um, but an advantage that Phoenix has over CLS lead is if, well, if you have Kanan on the team, you have seventy percent chance to counter versus fifty. So you have a little bit more. But then you get all these other shared buffs with their, all the other four. Um, Zeb and Chopper kind of like keep the team survivable. Also, Chopper has a assist ability. So if any time, so like 3PO could use his little call in and assist, everyone will come to assist and then Chopper might assist again. Has a 30% chance to assist whenever a droid or rebel, or no, I think it was droid and Phoenix ally and 3PO is a droid, um, you know, uses an ability. So that's huge. Um, also, if you don't want to use Chopper, the next best one a lot of people would use is Ezra. That works too, because he has a chance to double tap. But so does Sabine. And Sabine has an AoE, so if you were able to strategize, you know, throwing up some uh, exposes, her AoE be able to, you know, knock down a lot of protection and health, throw up some stagger, and then you can go back to picking off each character, you know, one by one. Um, but the thing is, is if you don't use Chop, I, I recommend more this uh, Chopper just for survivability of the Phoenix team. Because 3PO is going to be stealth a lot of the time, unless, you know, you run against a lot of people that unstealth. But, of course, I do want to see this against a Nightmare team. I really do. Like, this team, I, I think, may or may not have potential. Also, another nice thing is Hera has a basic that says she exposes on, she has a chance to expose on a uh, the healthiest unit. 
three PO is going to give that boat that <laughs> basic a chance to expose twice. So, well, it'll always expose once, but at least it'll expose uh, have a chance a second time. So when he calls everyone to assist, yeah, that's that's some interesting things. But you know, that's my thoughts on this team. And then the last team would be a Wigs, Chirrut, and Bays combo. Yes, the only two countering are these two. I get that. But you also got the call, like he gets a lot of turn meter if he's ever critically hit or hit by an Imperial. So he'll be sitting there calling an assist. So he'll call Wedge in and somebody else to assist. So there's going to be a ton of different um, exposes popping up. Not from his ability, but from his and one of the others. So yeah, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. And then also Chirrut and Bays, like in, you know, this just Chirrut and Bays in general, they call each other to assist as long as there's no days. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on this team. I really like, uh, you know, this team in general. It's really a cool, or not this team, but this this character. I do like 3PO's kit. I may not like the character itself, but I do like 3PO's kit. 3PO's kit is really good. It's like, you've never seen a kit like it. Seven abilities. The max you see is Bounty Hunters and, um, and Journey characters at six. So 3PO just... Just destroyed all of them and just, uh, you know, basic or abilities, number of abilities. He's the number one with the most abilities, number one character with the most abilities. He's not the best of the best characters. Like, he can't stand on his own. Like, there's a time, I think it was like Mobile Gamer or Arnold T. Or, no, no, I think it was Cubs fan. They decide, he decided to see what it was like with Hermit and 3PO 1v1. It was a draw, a victory draw. No one changed ranks or anything. So, I thought that was kind of cool to see. But other than that, other than that, that is my thoughts on uh, C-3PO. I Again, I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with me on cyborg relations? Do you disagree on, you know, getting rid of the exposed? Because I feel like Rebels, in my opinion, Rebels will probably be around for a while. Especially since uh, Raid Han and Chewie, that duo with C CLS and then two others. That's always going to be a thing. That is always going to be a thing. So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think again in the comments below. I really appreciate all those that watch the videos I make. And you guys have a wonderful day.